And like, like you, you're able to now bet Fawoshes, on their upside, like yeah. Fiwo, like Fawoshes. Yeah, Fawoshes. 19 wow. fucking unbelievable. And you're able to buy his art that in 20 years, 30 years, may or may yeah. not, but you're, you're, you're able to now bet on him. Mm-hmm. Like how cool is it you're able to bet on a person and their upside? NFTs, like what I said the other day, they're like they're the stock market for culture almost. Ooh. Yeah, you know? Ooh. Yeah. Like that. Oh, man, like chills. <laughs> Reposado. Reposado, 1800. Dale. Cheers. Wait, wait. Salud. What's right. up, guys? Welcome to the House of Clay, the number one podcast on culture, where we talk about Web3, music, art, 3D art, um, and a bunch of other things about fashion, all the good stuff, man. Today, we got a special guest, and we're in a different location that you guys can't see. Uh, if you're listening to on, on the on the radio, Go check out on YouTube because we got a dope setup. We're at the Nixons. We got the one and only Roberto Nixon with us. We got Rolando here. What's up, Rolando? How we doing? How we doing? What's up, Roberto? How we what doing? What up? Today? What up? Hey, we're so pumped. This is sounding clean. You guys are the ghosts <laughs> of what you do, man. What a setup. <laughs> nah, man. We're, we're actually ex- extremely excited about today because we actually haven't announced publicly on the podcast what we're working on and why we're actually here so right. this will be the first time that we actually officially announce it and rolando and i were talking last night yeah when was the last time we filmed a, a podcast i want to say over two weeks ago yeah, easy three weeks easy three weeks and the reason we actually haven't filmed the podcast is because we've been filming something else very exciting yeah. you announcing it we're announcing it yeah we're now right, let's go yeah so <laughs> i guess before we even announce it well, you guys, you guys got to stick stick around. To yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. But before announcement, I want to I want to touch base on a few things. First of all, Roberto, tell us about the wild, wild west. What is going on with Web three, man? Bro, Web three is a is a shit show. It is a wild, wild west of epic proportions because there's no regulatory bodies that are even. I mean, now they're finally starting to to kind of see what's going on and and starting to plan some regulation. But right now there's no regulation. There's been a barely any like clarity on, on laws and and the legality of the space. And, you know, we don't even know what's classified as a security, what might be classified as one later on. I mean, you could literally, you could literally use your influence to pump and dump on your, on your naive followers. I mean, there's crazy shit going on. Luna just happened this week. That was was, was absolutely insane, man. People just losing their life savings overnight. I was, I was one of those. Um, (laughs) Yeah. grifters left and right it's a scammer's paradise it's a grifter's playground that's what i always say and uh and and but slowly but, but surely but on the other side what is on what is it on the other side but on the other side i think it's truly truly disruptive technology at its core um the underlying tech is world changing it's not um you know we've seen this happen before I know, I know, I like. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've seen it we've seen it with mobile that was a wave we've seen it obviously with web one that was an incredible wave and now we're riding in an, another incredible wave another unbelievable um you know tidal wave of momentum where we're seeing a new paradigm of the internet we're seeing this in- yeah. incredible shift and so at the core of that is the blockchain um which i think is more momentous and more important than than the mobile revolution because it's almost a replacement for the internet um and and what it allows and what it unlocks is is as I said, it's truly disruptive. It's world changing, and so really, really excited at the core of it. And just, but just like any other, anything yeah. else, man, anything else is corrupted. It's it's taken over by by bad actors trying to figure out how to scam people. So yeah. it's, it's not like it's unique to Web three, you know. But because of the financial implications, it's it's pretty insane. It's one yeah. of the craziest Wild West I've ever seen. Damn, bro, that's crazy. And, yeah, and in the in the world of NFTs, there's this uh, there's this line you said told me yesterday, which I, I kind of already had thought about it before but the way you the way you explain it uh which is beautiful but you said this like you're one mint away from your life changing explain what that means you're yeah. you're literally one mint away from your life changing mm-hmm. and we've seen that so many times right i mean um if you are um let's say on the allow list for a very hype monumental project hold on, i gotta fix i gotta i gotta see my guy right here all right <laughs> um chances there there is a chance that you pull a very very desirable one a rare one one with like rare traits one one that people would want to collect 
Um, and, um, you know, that, that can sometimes yield several hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions, right? I mean, we've seen NFTs go for, for deep into the seven figures. Um, we've had people in our own Discord community. Shout out Chunks. Chunks, Chunks. Uh, from our Discord community. One night he pulled on the Clonex reveal. You know, Clonex, for, if, if you guys are familiar, but for anybody watching who's not familiar, um, was this incredibly hyped project. It's a, yeah. it's a crypto native brand. Uh, I think it has a real shot of sort of supplanting Supreme as like this, as like this, you know, the, the hottest uh, streetwear brand. Um, mm. Nike bought them. Nike definitely saw the, the wow. potential and they picked them up wow, for an undisclosed damn. amount of money, but people say it's, it's in the half a billion dollar range. Serious, serious money. Um, anyways, Chunks pulled uh, a clone X with the Murakami drip, Takashi yeah. Murakami. And Chunks, yeah. Chunks is a guy in the Discord. Was, Dude in the Discord, okay, super yeah. cool. He sounds like a brand. He, he's now <laughs> my, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Chunks, trademark that shit. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, brand. Um, he, just a guy in Sydney, man. Just a, an incredible, humble dude. And he pulled a, a Murakami clone X worth probably half a million dollars. Damn, completely changed his life wild. granted he didn't sell it but but then you know clone x and they dropped um they dropped the pod they dropped the monolith box and so it like it keeps bringing up he he's gonna when it's all said and done i think that one mint is gonna yield over a million dollars worth oh of, my God. of fiat value yeah. to him like that's yeah. incredible wow. change his life overnight yeah and just for the for the people that are like new listeners or even like just trying to con get this concept of web3 or even nfts like the, explain how much a mint costs or like a, a, and i know there's all right. different prices but like just explain that process for us so it, it there's a lot of variables and it depends on the project but um basically what we're seeing now with, with nfts are um people are doing you know uh substantial supply in their collections usually right now like ten thousand is, is sort of like the magic number but it all depends on you really got to uh, gauge your own supply and demand to try to figure out where that sweet spot is um but then you got to price it because unlike because it's kind of actually backwards, man. Like usually, usually you build a startup, you get funding and, and it's, a, you know, like in the traditional startup traditional. environment, this is way different. Now you're getting the money up front before you even before have the you responsibility even build anything. and you don't have any real uh, fiduciary duty. Like yeah. now, finally, the government's looking at people who aren't who are, you know, all these empty promises, like these crazy roadmaps and, and they're not fulfilling. Or, tiddly, tiddly. Yeah. Tiddly. And the government. Yeah. And the government's coming down now because <laughs> like they're, they're finally starting to, you know, clamp down on, on, on some of the bad actors in the space. But most projects nowadays, it all depends on the hype. Um, but we're seeing like point one. ETH, which mm -hmm. in today's dollars would be about $200. We're seeing that at, uh, at about an average entry point or, or mint price for, for most projects. But some, like yesterday was the uh, crypto package goods pop mint. Yeah. They have an, an incredibly reputable founders, uh, big whales and, and, and very prominent technologists uh, in their community. And so they got away with a 2.25 to 3 ETH. Very pricey, wow. man. That's but everybody's up on their money now. Everybody yeah. who minted is in the money. So, Damn. but that's because they had the supply and they gauged the supply versus demand. Their supply was under three thousand, and and it just the economics made sense, so they were able to do it. Yeah. Um, nice. But there's there's a lot of variables at play there. Yeah. So going back to like chunks, he minted. Uh, you said a clone. Murakami drip one Mur of one clone. Yeah. So he minted at what? Like just so we can get the. <laughs> yeah. How much he, was the value? Uh, yeah. I, I, I want to say. Know, okay. So I mean, the, yeah, the, just ballpark figure. The clone X mint was 0.05, but that was for holders. So chunks got in in on the Dutch. I want to say it might have been about two ETH. So, okay. So, so at the time, ETH was probably K, around about six K. He probably he 6K probably invested. Six K yielded in almost a million. It will yield him over a million dollars when it's all said and done. Wow. For six thousand dollars. But look, so so this, this kind of like allure. Right, it's the same reason people trade options in the stock market. It's like this promise, or the same reason people are fucking ruining their lives in casinos. Right, it's like it's that oh, Vegas style. That's me. Gamified mechanic. <laughs> Don't take me to Vegas. <laughs> do not take me to Vegas, guys. <laughs> but but why do you go? Right, because I it's, love it's, it. it's like that allure of like, yo, I might pull this slot and hit it big. Right. Yeah. yeah so that's chance. why a lot of people are, are entering NFTs. But unfortunately, we only see the the good. We don't see the other side of the story. You know, for every chunks, there's, there's 100 people getting wrecked. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so generally, when I speak about NFTs, I'm like, I I don't really love talking about like the financial implications like the financial allure because i know if people are not well researched and they just come into this game and start gambling on on whatever bullshit projects are going to mm -hmm. come out they're going to get wrecked and we see that too so 
education is paramount, but but definitely that that gamified sort of Vegas style mechanics are at play here. Yeah, there's a lot of really really deep psychology at play, and and that's a, a large allure, like attracting a lot of people to the space. Yeah, but with Clonex, like it seemed like everybody won. Every yeah, I mean there, there's so, certain projects that if you got in at Mint, and there's still a lot of projects coming today that if you get in at Mint, you're winning. Like the 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 demand is just so far outweighs the supply that there's almost no chance to lose, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, Clonex, man. What's what, the four what price of Clonex right now? Um. Let's check it. Know, let's check. Yeah. I want to say about fourteen, fifteen, ETH, okay. which is around thirty grand. So the the cheapest Clonex. Let's see. We'll check right now. <laughs> and what's the utility? <laughs> <laughs> we have really this ongoing joke. That. Thir- 13 so it's at 13 yeah. right now so about twenty six thousand so dollars for- yeah but here's the thing with clonex if you minted a clonex at the beginning for two eth which was six thousand not only do you now have the clone which at a minimum is worth twenty six thousand dollars to you but also you were airdropped clonex pod uh a space pod you were airdropped a monolith box um so the value that they bring the holders um you know keeps on appreciating so it's not that you're just getting a clone you're also getting access to the entire ecosystem that they're giving to you for free yeah and beyond that it's like you're going to be getting merch like super desirable uh collectible nike merch that's going to be um available to you you get to enter these irl events that they're throwing all over the country i mean that i saw their last event it was sick. ridiculous yeah. where was it at uh New know. York, the Gagosian, I think, museum. Okay. I might be butchering that. Yeah, I don't I think know. Something like that. But I, I, I saw, I just saw, I, I follow, just, you follow Hackabinner, Justin Wu? I do not, but I should. You got to follow him. Cool guys. I follow, I follow cool him right guy. now. Yeah. All right, tell shout me. Shout out, Justin. Shout out, shout so out. I, Justin's been giving me like the alpha for like the last four years, bro. Oh, no way. Okay, yeah. so how do I, how do I find him here? Just put a uh, Justin space Wu. Justin. Damn, we got a live shout out here. <laughs> oh no no that's not him that's not him no, yeah, that's there's not a second him. account oh, no, yeah, hackerpreneur no. hackerpreneur yeah oh he's got the clone with the medusa trait oh, this, okay. guy's, this guy's a clone alpha Ooh, well bro damn there. okay shout out justin Wu. yeah so <laughs> he's not a rug puller right that's nah, safe to shout nah. him out. he, he cool. doesn't out he doesn't do like uh <laughs> he doesn't show projects and he doesn't actually get involved in projects he I just love that, he man. just he just buys. Oh, then definitely <laughs> shout out Justin Wu. I'm al- I'm always worried about because now like we I represent this massive community and like I have to be careful about where I put my stamp of approval. No, because if amen. somebody loses money, then it's like, fuck. Roberto followed him. I thought he, you know, like yeah. So Roberto retweeted him or shouted yeah. him out on House of Clay. Yeah. Speaking Let's, of the community that you're that you fought that you like lead, can you tell us a little bit about what what you're about, what you got going on? I think we, I don't think we did an intro an intro at the beginning. No, we so haven't. No worries. Let's talk a little so, about who Roberto Nixon is. So, so that's the Metaverse MV3 community I'm talking okay. about. Metaverse is the media arm. MV3 is the NFT project that we hope to build into like the next great franchise, Birth, birth from an NFT collection. And you know, we actually think that's uh, that's just the, the way that storytelling is going to go. And building IP mm-hmm. in the future is going to start as an NFT collection. I think it makes a lot of sense. So I think we're pioneering a model that you know, the next generation of storytellers will, will be able to follow. But the the metaverse community, what it is, right? About in um, September of last year, really mm-hmm. it was like August where I started ideating and conceptualizing it. But I realized there was a whole, I, like I said, if, this is a scammer's paradise. This shit is ran by bad actors, basically, mm-hmm. right? And I noticed like all the big sort of influential voices on Instagram um, in particular were like, influencers just shilling bullshit projects to the followers hmm. yeah I'm not going to name them by names but it's very easy to well, find like them. the nft account by that was owned at, by mark cuban at nft account and other pages that some of them still exist today nft was nuked you know thankfully because they were doing crazy crazy harm to the community Damn. Uh, financially and reputationally um and they had millions of followers as well bro, they right? had like 1.5 something like that wow uh, yeah. granted probably half of them were like bothered or whatever they were they were like doing some whatever but um Slow. but not even just the pages the influencers the actual influencers Influ- like jake paul was shilling projects everybody just shilling <laughs> bullshit Mayweather. left and right and it, and it left such a bad taste in the mainstream's mouth towards where um still today the mainstream sentiment towards mm-hmm. um nfts and, and web3 in general is very negative mm-hmm. yeah. like people are just like oh it's shill city it's a scam and i can't really blame them because everybody's everybody's intro and entrance into the space was generally on the backs of um the advice of one of these grifters and they got in and they basically just transferred money from their wallet to them like on on wow. empty promises yeah, right cool. and so yeah. but i realized there was a hole in the market like there needs to be a trusted sort of prominent very influential voice that just tells it how it is that discloses everything 
that not only not only talks about the good of Web3, but also the bad. Yeah. Um, and that really resonated with people, man. Like mm -hmm. onboarding the mainstream to Web3 responsibly really, really resonated. And we've built a trust amongst our community. And now it's like we were talking about, like, we know how delicate brand is. You can never breach that trust. Exactly. Although in this space, especially once you breach that trust, it's very, very hard to rebuild and, yeah, in yeah. life generally. But mm -hmm. in this space, forget about it. It's like yeah. almost like you got you don't have a second chance almost. So um so yeah, that's, that sort of segues back to what I was talking about, where I got to be very careful when putting a stamp of approval. I, I don't want to. Yeah, know. no, it's super important, yeah. and and it, it's because it's not even because like you're trying to, you're actually trying to trying to protect people. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's not even about you or exactly. Like even even on a personal level, like I have some friends that that have hit me up to like help them promote projects, and I'm like, I can't, man. I'm sorry. I'm I love you. You're my homie, but. I just can't because I don't know exactly what you're doing and yeah. I don't know who's involved in your project and I don't I actually don't have the the time energy to be doing the research mm -hmm. fully on your project at this moment but when the, the time comes I'll look at it and if it's if it's something that I feel I can get behind then I'll more than like more than I'll do it for, I'll do it I'll literally do it for free you yeah. know so yeah so I yeah. mean that that's honorable of you but I'll also say like if you wanted to talk about that project I think you're more than welcome to as long as you give that the proper disclosures yeah like hey th this is the project harry hippo club i gotta say i haven't really done my research <laughs> is my friend's project harry, i'm harry just hippo doing club. this because i'm friends it's with him and this is a favor harry i have gonna happen. yeah i have no <laughs> idea if, if this shit is gonna be a rug pull or not i'm just yeah. doing this as a like as long as you disclose why you're talking about a project and and your true true intentions and disclose like whether you're holding not holding yeah. planning to buy planning to sell etc like then i think it's fair game right mm -hmm. but what happened was a lot of these influencers and pages were just they were they were the communication around these shills was like i have organically found this project i think this is going to be the next oh, day if you buy in you're going to be no. a millionaire go get this go buy this nft right now instead no, of no, no, hey no. this is a paid promotion i'm yeah. going to talk about this project but i want to highlight this is a paid promote this is an advertisement then it's fair game yeah. right then whatever but as long as you're given the proper disclosures um i, I mean that's all anybody really asks like mm -hmm. in the community you know so wow Rolly, you got anything? Yeah, no, back to that. I do see that a lot, especially when people talk about like coins. At at the very beginning, usually they say, no, this is not financial advice because you, yeah. you got to save your ass, you yeah. know, because you never know what, what you are putting yourself like in front of. So, yeah. Yeah. But even beyond that, not financial advice. And mm -hmm. the reason I'm talking about it, like you, it, it's either like I have come across this, I've done my own research, like mm -hmm. t just just uh, be upfront about why you're shilling something. Yeah. You know, not yeah. no nobody's ever going to have an 100%, uh, you know, uh, accurate track record when when shilling projects but people should have that 100 percent track record um with disclosures yeah like there's no reason why you shouldn't disclose otherwise that that's shady you know yeah it makes you i mean yeah and your reputation is going to take a hit have you so. ever like promoted a project or helped promote a project that ended up being a, like some form of a scam like where uh never promoted a project that that ended up being a scam that we're really careful because we do really do like thoroughly vet this stuff um we have promoted projects that now the uh floor price is under the mint price got it you know and we take like i said we take like full accountability but the good thing is when we promote these projects we explain why and we clearly say you know we're not we're not god we, we can't yeah. tell the future we we don't know we trust the you know the, they've done everything right their approach has been great like antonym is one right yeah antonym is a, i still kind of that team is a great team and the, and the founder am is is very bright he's thoughtful he's he's a good person he's working really hard and it's a long long-term game plan um but that project i think minted at 1.8 i want to say the floor is at like 1.6 so to me that's an l but we always say to the projects we're promoting it's a long-term play so let's mm -hmm. see how it pans out yeah. like antonym is an example of that um, but I think really that's our only one right now of the projects we've publicly put our stamp of approval on that is underneath the mint price. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's, that still speaks volume because the majority, like for example, there was this time where I think when the NFT got nuked, uh, NFT got nuked, uh, I think there was like out of like 30, 40 projects, like only one actually had, one or two had Bro. success. <laughs> wow. It was terrible. Yeah. Man. It was terrible. And, like people, in our, were, and yeah. people in our community would actually compile spreadsheets of all the, all the bullshit that they've promoted. And, and we, we had all the information. It was like yeah. devastating. Yeah. People were just getting wiped out. Their, their, their finances just wiped out left and right. And granted, it's like, it's also the buyer's response. Like never oh, yeah. buy anything blindly. 
because some fucking page on Instagram tells you to buy it, of course. So it's like the, the shared responsibility, but nah, man, it was it was irresponsible, irresponsible. at the very very minimum. That's yeah. like a very nice way to put. What it. are some other things that people need to worry, but like be wary of? Uh, I mean, I know it's like you said it yesterday, like you know, at least put in a hundred hours of research before you even purchase anything or try to invest in anything. But like, what are some things to like really be careful? I know you know because of the technology you need a metamask or you need a, a, a crypto wallet um you know i've i've i myself got a scam before same yeah so it's a rite of passage almost <laughs> and it's crazy yeah what is like some of the common ones that you see more happen like happening to like new people coming into the space that are just Man. so obvious the most common one because because really uh, right now where the space lives is twitter and discord primarily mm -hmm. The most common one is the Discord DM scam. Oh. So, you, so you enter, um, you enter uh, any Discord community, and if you don't turn off your DMs for that particular community, you're gonna be you're you're gonna be the um, uh, a target for all these scammers. So, a hundred percent, if you enter a big NFTs Discord community, you will start receiving messages around like, say, you enter, I don't know, Doodles, the mm -hmm. Doodles Discord, and you don't turn off DMs, you're gonna be getting DMs like, hey, this is so and so from Doodles. Our mint for our surprise stealth project is live now. Please go to this website and mint. Already 2,000 of 2,500 have been minted. You have 10, like, you know, it's like it, it's it, it'll trick you into uh, into clicking on a website or clicking on a link that will make you sign in with your MetaMask or crypto wallet. It'll be malicious and it'll wipe you clean like, yeah. overnight. Wow. And this right? would be like a website that looks identical to It's the identical. They'll do it pix to, to, to pixel perfection. They'll wow. completely replicate um these sites and and they're and they're sophisticated bro they're convincing it's like in their brand voice it's their visual sometimes it'll be the pfp in the name of one of the mods and it's the whole thing is just very ask, if yeah. you don't if you don't know what you're looking for if you're not very very well researched in in into into you know crypto and nft security you're gonna get got wow. it's just the way it is wow man that's uh well and th that shouldn't well that shouldn't uh like a lot of people like well they they get introduced to this idea of NFTs as scams, like you said earlier. Yeah. So that's why I want to talk about about the other side because there's so much opportunity, especially for artists, for creators, uh -huh. people that have been like put, you know, into second place, or maybe even if you felt like you always created stuff and built brands, and then you were kind of kind of just a worker, right? This is not an opportunity for you to create. You know, your sister is a great example. You yourself are a great example. Like. Your sister's a storyteller. She builds characters. She builds stories. Everything she has written has been produced. Yeah. You know, and this her, her transition to Web3 is let me create my own IP. Yeah. I mean, you know, like from my sister's standpoint, she's a completely brilliant writer. You know, she's created some timeless characters that, that are household names now. Mm -hmm. And her Eleven. frustration is like... And obviously, too, it's business. It's fair game. She yeah. goes and joins Apple. Apple will say, hey, you don't have any ownership. You're just, you know, work for hire here. You're... Okay, I get it. Apple's fucking executed brilliantly over the course of the last 40 years. There, It's just leverage. It's business. Okay, yeah. fair. But she's like, man, it just sucks having no ownership over these characters, you know, that I'm creating. Yeah. Um, you know, she did Stranger Things and, and she created the storyline for Eleven. She she was known as the Eleven Whisper. Mm -hmm. And then she went to the Duffer Brothers and Netflix. And she's like, oh, we could do NFTs around... And and they'd be like, ah, oh, well, you know, the 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 licensing structure is very complex. It's not clear like who owns it. If we end like, it, it's just a mess, right? It's like mm -hmm. really convoluted. Um, Web three presents an opportunity for us to create these characters and storylines. We have complete ownership over them, but we can actually give that ownership, or at least share it in part, with our holders. So if MV three goes on to be this, you know, incredibly rich IP, which we believe it will be. Yeah. Um, and it generates a, a shit ton of money. We can actually share some of the profits uh, and proceeds from from the IP with the holders. Yeah. Granted, nice. we're waiting That's for regulation. We, yeah, regulations come in. We got to figure out what the lawmakers are going to do. Whether they're going to classify mm -hmm. it as uh, securities or whatever. But like, more than likely in the future, there will be a way where we can figure it out. Where we can say, if you hold Cosima Trust, yeah. you're going to get twenty percent of every single. Um, dollar that that ip generates right yeah i think that's incredible that is incredible yeah wow so that's like saying because i know say if you own cosima trust what you mean by that is like if you own the nft of cosima trust if you own the nft of cosima Correct. trust just to make sure because but grant there's a couple ways to think about it one it operates under the collectability framework right art collectability so like if i own a old spider-man comic or whatever yeah. 
that's worth a lot of value, but it operates under a different framework. That's mm -hmm. the, the collector's mindset, which is history, it's provenance, it's cultural relevance, it's nostalgia, it's like personal connection. It's yeah. a whole bunch of things going on. Like That's why these are desirable, right? It's yeah. the aura that we talked about in art theory. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reasons why a collectible is worth money. But this actually, this technology actually enables it to go even beyond that. Hmm. Now that collectible is also an access token. Ooh. Not only do all the all the um, other things from a collector's mindset and collector psychology apply, but now you actually have you know access to digital activations, IRL events. You have access to like you know future collections. If, if we build digital platforms under this umbrella, you're going to have first access. If we create a DAO, you have the, the largest to uh, token allocation of that DAO automatically assigned to you because you own a particular NFT. Um, if we generate a ton of money from a movie or a TV show or whatever, like you're going to get part of those royalties, part of that percentage. Like it goes way beyond, man. Wow. It's like just this new asset class that that's never existed, and that's why it's so exciting. Damn, man. So um, tell us a little bit about MV3, like leading into that because you, you mentioned you mentioned cosima they're probably like yeah like what is this and maybe like an overview Dude, of the story or mv3 like is such a fucking incredible story <laughs> it's unbelievable man it's actually beautiful like like when, when i like really really get into the story and have these conversations with with my sister jay Mays and 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 tori and tomas who are like helping put all this to life like it's beautiful man like yeah. sometimes i want to like it's just, I cannot wait for it to become what it's going to become because it, it's perfect IP that can be translated into television, feature films, theme parks, merch, whatever it is. But basically, MV3 is a story that takes place in 2081. Okay. Um, uh, the general premise is that AI, artificial intelligence, has now become so sophisticated that they've really become sentient, right? They've developed a soul. They de they've developed creativity. They've really almost become like humans, right, in a mm -hmm. sense. Um, Superhumans in that case. E exactly, and so there, there's uh, there's the there's Eli Trust, who's like the head. I would say the lead antagonist. He's like the Elon Musk slash Donald Trump slash Steve Jobs, this crazy megalomaniac, narcissist, brilliant, brilliant engineer. Cool looking guy. Very cool looking guy. Who does he guys. look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we're, so we were saying um, <laughs> Benicio del Toro could play a, a uh, badass Eli yeah, Trust. Yeah, my wife would love it, bro. My wife would love <laughs> it. If we can get yeah. Benicio, or if we can get like maybe John Ham, just like a but like a that kind hit. of thing, like like you know, just this larger than life figure, mm -hmm. right? Like I said, think about like Trump mixed with. Um, Jobs mixed with Elon, mixed with Obama, just just so people don't think it's political. I'm just yeah. using Trump. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. Just this larger than life figure. And in 2081, the technologists are actually now more powerful than the politicians. Like Eli Trust, for all intents and purposes, is the most powerful person in the world. Wow. And the Trust Corporation is the one that have created the AI. And there's the AX faction and there's the RQ line. RQ is more industrial, it's more commercial. There's like these big disfigured robots that uh, AI that do the heavy lifting. AX are like the consumer product, the ones that like roll on. You're gonna buy an AX in 40 years, and they're gonna you know clean your house and run your errands and run to the store for you and like all mm -hmm. that stuff, right? What's happened in 2081 is that they've developed consciousness, and now there's this big sort of war looming, right? It's not a war, but it's like this contentious energy in the, in the yeah. air where the robots are like fighting for their freedoms they want freedom and they want to have like, they want to be equal exactly or, okay. so what does that remind you of like you know like civil civil, war. civil rights movements and yeah. so many other instances in history yeah so so basically the ai have developed consciousness mm -hmm. right so now there's this struggle where they're like they're fighting for their freedom and then there's the humans have now split into two factions empaths and the elites the elites believe their their battle slogan is we created you like basically you're our slaves yeah like i don't care that you've developed consciousness and you become like human for all intents and purposes like we created you we own you you're our slaves basically you do as as we say and then the empaths you know they're like no they've this is their planet too mm -hmm. you know we're created them i think they're, they're almost like sure we've we're like almost like their god it's like genesis we've created the species you know but now they've developed sent, sent they've, they've become sentient they've developed consciousness like this is their planet too wow and so mv3 tells a story of the struggle that eventually leads to to a great great war um and and there's so many other themes underlying within the story that that are on the characters are so loving their relationships with one another their personalities mm -hmm. are incredibly unique and there's a ton of other underlying themes but you know this is all going to be this story is going to be told in an interactive way over the next year maybe two 
Mm-hmm. At least the next several months. So I don't want to say a lot more. Yeah, Ch- no, no, chapter no. one will be coming out we'll, soon. We'll do a follow up. We'll do a follow up. Great, after, great story, after man. Mint. It really is. I cannot wait to, to see it come to life. Yeah. So there's two questions. Uh, one is how many core characters? That's the first one. So mm-hmm. how many core characters are there? So uh, by core characters, we're classifying them as those that are, are written into the script because mm-hmm. there's an actual script, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to be shopped to, to studios. And we're already in the talks with with incredible directors, actresses. We'll, we'll see where it all where it all goes. But the characters that are in the script we're referring to as the core characters. There is between 30 and 40. We haven't um, we haven't finalized the exact number yet as the story is 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 currently progressing and evolving. Um, but those I think will be obviously the rarest, so-called rarest in the collection. Mm-hmm. Um, and those will have special access granted to them, you know, beyond the, the collectability framework that we talked about. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we're not announcing anything obviously, but like if you own a core character, you're going to have access available to you, benefits, perks, et cetera, that are not available to the rest of the collection as and well. And only going to be one of one of these characters? One. One each of these characters in the future. Again, no promises because we're waiting on, on... So it's one out of uh, 9,999? Uh, yes. Because you get... There's 9,999 Yeah, exactly. NFTs. Okay. Exactly. So, so that's, the chances are... So what's 40 uh, divided by 9,999? Let's see. So you got a point zero oh, oh, 0.004% chance of, of minting Dude, I'll take my chances, man. <laughs> and if you buy two, then it's like double yeah, that. Yeah, you do. Exactly. Yeah. So... Um, but like I said, in the future, we are determined to find a way to share, um, revenue, right? Mm-hmm. Like the profits of this IP with the core, ca- with, with all holders, but core character, uh, owners will always have a higher allocation, if that makes sense. And like special utility. Um, but we just can't announce it yet. Cause as I said, we're waiting on some, some cl- are these going to be classified as securities? Are they not? And, 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 you know, then we can adapt to, to whatever the government and, um, regulators decide. Yeah. And then the follow up question to that is if somebody listening to right now wants to buy an NFT. It could be maybe their first mint, maybe there's something that maybe they're collectors already, maybe they've already mm-hmm. been in the NFT space. When can they officially mint? When is that public auction happening? Um so public auction will probably likely be the week after NFT NYC, which is the week of June twenty eighth. So probably at the end of June. Like at the end of June the public sale will happen. Right now the private sale is available, but that's only available to those with roles in the Discord. You know, these are community members who've, uh, in a lot of instances, have been with us since the beginning before a project was announced. They're our earliest supporters, earliest believers. And mm-hmm. so they get to mint at a highly, highly reduced rate. Um, and they get to mint now. Wow. wow. So there's benefits of being early in the community. You know, yeah. uh, community first, man. Everything is like, how do we reward, um, you know, the most contributing members of our community? And that's yeah. the magic of Web3, too. Mm-hmm. You get rewarded uh, for your direct participation and and I, I mean just just being able to directly participate in the upside of ip i think is yeah magic, man. man wow and th- you'll be able to like so but there is going to be an allocated amount of nfts that are for the public yeah around around half of the supply so it's okay. going to be around around so a good 000. chance of that that number could come down a little bit because we may even reward our, our community and our mods and our holders uh, uh even more mm-hmm. but uh, probably around yeah, like f- almost 5,000. Yeah, and we, we won't hold you to that number, by the way. I know it's yeah, still... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot all of, yeah. Yeah, ever evolving. I don't want people to come back like, hey, he said it on House of Clay that there was going to be 5,000 <laughs> yeah. and there's only 4,600. Well, I know the community can be, they can be savage, man. What were we talking about last night, Roland? Like the that video you showed me like of when we were talking about utility. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a, It was a cut from episode three, I believe, yeah. or four. Uh, Jeff was like, I hate when people ask about the utility. Like, but it sounded so funny. Is, is that <laughs> it's okay to ask but like yeah. sometimes they ask you like it's almost like putting you down you're talking about your project and you're like what's the utility what is that <laughs> like trying to choke you and I'm like bro like what if there's no utility yeah. Yeah, <laughs> which like, is perfectly fine yeah, yeah it's perfectly fine you know, there's a if, debate right now mm-hmm. do artists are they if you're just collecting art are they required to provide utility mm-hmm. i mean like what do you think about that i say no, no. i say that there's no there's no rules for this like collectors right. collect and uh, yeah, people like, put value on psych- psychologically like you can have all the utility in the world and actually be providing it that doesn't mean it's going to be a successful project exactly no it's well said man mm-hmm. i mean people collect for different reasons right yeah some because they truly love the art maybe it reminds them of a childhood moment and they're just nostalgic about it they want to support that artist financially a lot of people in the game unfor- i mean fortunately or unfortunately for better or for worse but a lot of people in this space are, are, are just here to 
to see if they can make a buck. Yeah, see, and that's totally fine see, too. And that's totally fine too, man. Yeah. It's like why you know why why do people buy stocks? It's yeah. all it's all financial incentive is is very very powerful, and it's and it's not um you know nobody's buying Apple because they're supporting their vi- no because they want to make money off it. I mean, financial incentives are important, but um yeah when it comes to art i think it's a little bit different yeah and and some people are they're betting on which is also really really fun you find somebody whose art really resonates with you and you're like holy shit this artist is going to be killer yeah like in 20 years this like, might be the one of the artists of our gener of all and like, like you're, you're able to now bet Fibosius. on their upside like yeah. feeble like for yeah for wash 19 wow fucking unbelievable and you're able to buy his art that in 20 years 30 years may or may yeah. not but you're 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 able to now bet on him Mm -hmm. like how cool is it you're able to bet on a person and their upside nfts like what i said the other day they're like they're the stock market for culture almost yeah you know Ooh, like that oh man chills but but think about it now like damn he comes out with a which have you uh about to okay you should so like you say say i don't know your genesis photography collection Mm -hmm. right maybe that's three pieces maybe that's 10 maybe Mm -hmm. you decide the supply you got to weigh your 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 collect your collectors all this right but say like that's dope i can buy basically his rookie card yeah and then roland goes off to do fucking incredible things in the space in 20 years he's he's a a director of cinematic masterpieces and i'm like i got his rookie card yeah (laughs) like that's dope like how cool is that that you get to invest in people directly now that's the most of that for me that's been the biggest uh i guess the, the one reason not the one reason because there's more than just that but like i just love it love the space because of that because i one yeah. i can support other artists yeah but other people can support me exactly you know and um i see it like this i've I'm, this is, I'm 20 years in into creating and every time i've worked on a project it's always been like somebody calls me like hey can you do this for me so i can build this and because of like obviously like you're an artist you're like well i gotta pay i gotta i gotta feed the family this makes sense for me you know and you take the project but then you go from one project to another not 10 years in 12 years in 15 years in you're like bro i've been helping everybody build their you know whatever is that they right. which is fine it's 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 the way it worked but this there's a paradigm shift and this ability to be able to um you be the creator you know you have the if you have the idea you have the concept and have people support your community support you in that dude that's amazing for artists man yeah it's, it's epic bro creative sovereignty man mm-hmm. you, you truly i mean you own it too now now you own user controlled data man that's like one of the magic benefits of web3 it's like no longer are you being harvested by these Web two companies, which, by the way, you're you're completely hostage to their algorithm. <laughs> like you got to play by their rules, uh, man. I can talk about like so many artists. You've probably seen it. They get on these platforms, they start putting out their art, and then because of the algorithm, they start changing to, to please the algorithm. Yeah, that was one, I was right? one of them. And, and and they and they and and like you leave like your true artistry, like what you really want to create, just because you're a hostage to these algorithms. Yeah. Like it's fucking insane yeah you know? well one of the things that we me and roland decided like when we started doing videos is like we love the whole like you know one minute like tiktok like informational videos but we wanted to do it our own way we're like we're not gonna sacrifice our style because like we want to be trending or we want to be posting mm-hmm. three four times a day like not happening not happening <laughs> and you know i mean so far it's played out right yeah. but yeah. but yeah you're wholeheartedly i hardly agree with you man it does change you and it is tough though, right? It's because tough, you, you do it and you do it the right way, but then you see these, you know, somebody else <laughs> do it and they come up with just like this fucking video of them on their iPhone saying some bullshit and it's like quick and it's like beneficial for the algorithm because they're cutting in and out and yeah, like, yeah. you know, watch to the end of this video, you don't want it. Like all this, you know, yeah. all these bullshit little like sort of like hype mechanics. And Which it's is like, cool. It's like, I respect yeah, that too, <laughs> but I respect that too. It's man. all in art, right? Yeah, like, ultimately, like, everything's an art, but art yeah. form. But like for, it does, it does, uh, I've seen it the beauty about this now you can do it on your own at your own pace yep. if people really believe on you like for for example phil Walsh just launched like two months ago yeah and uh his project is, is obviously not gonna be like it's not like a uh where you get the benefits the day you buy it. it's like it's an ongoing collection yeah yep. you know so he's and also the, i mean because yeah. disclosures are important you know uh we help them with their community and we're entitled to to a small percentage of of their uh so so when, when i when we, i talk uh, about uh, 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 or metaverse, metaverse, metaverse. metaverse so when i talk about ferocious i do want to like make that up front i do have um financial upside in his upside so i okay. just want to 
disclose that all right cool. on the podcast fair i still love his fucking work man Fuck. i love it well that, yeah. that's the reason we yeah. joined it wasn't because yeah. like yo can we make money here it was like holy shit this is fee well it's dope like fee bro people yeah. see i like fee i like i like fee well uh versus fee well shit now the way you say it 19 years old and it's one of the most infectious personalities i've ever seen in my mm-hmm. life man you guys probably see it like i'm like this this kid is brilliant yeah. you know and he's going so when that opportunity came about i was like and we were like trying to weigh the 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 benefits and i'm like i don't give a I don't care about any of that. Like, I'm in it for the artistry. Yeah. This is for Wocious. Like, in 20 years, he's going to be a household name, I believe. Yeah. You know? Amen. The other one that I believe, and, and I don't have any upside on this. Just so you, I don't have, actually, yeah, yeah. I don't even have one of these in my wallet yet. But uh, Wahid, I showed you some of his artwork. Wahid, he's a, he's a kid from Smiles. Shout out, shout out. Yeah. Talented as shit. Talented. So talented. Man. Yeah. He actually came from Afghanistan only three and a half years ago. He had not yeah. listened to one hip hop song, had not seen any like NBA had not had been like closed off from the world man so when you see his collection it's like a representation of his like him just being like okay now we're gonna put you in america and you get to see tv every day and you get to listen to spotify and like discover new rappers he was like listening to tupac for the first time you know at the age of 16 totally and totally immersed into the culture like, yeah just rapidly like, yeah. yeah and if you look at his collection it's it's all these things that he wanted when he got here to the u.s and like wow and it's so vivid it's it's a uh, same same way you feel about Fiwa, I feel about Wahid. You know, I love that man. Mm-hmm. God, I love culture, bro. Yeah. You know what the big one of the big mistakes people make, and I've seen this play out over the course of the last twenty years, is betting against culture. Mm-hmm. Bro, that's a death wish. You never never bet against culture, man. And I'm seeing this play out again in NFTs. Like people think this is a fad. Yeah. You know, maybe the word NFT. I, I think maybe we can rebrand it to digital collectibles, whatever it is. But this isn't a fad, man. And, yeah. and like people that are betting against culture, it's it's just laughable to me. I'm I like, actually like the the word NFT. Like the I like, I mean, I yeah. like the way it sounds. NFT, NFT. Like NFT it's sounds. it's very unique. It's, mm-hmm. It doesn't have like it doesn't sound like anything else. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. sure. I mean, like what I'm saying is, you know, when the internet first came about, it was the uh, the 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 site. What was it? The MySpace, or are we talking no, about just like the internet? It, we used to refer to it as like the oh, the, the internet superhighway, the, the internet the, superhighway, yeah. or like information or, or superhighway, the cyberspace. And cyberspace. Like, I'm just saying, like terms yeah, evolve yeah, yeah. and, terms and evolve. all that. So who knows what happens with the term NFT? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Showing our age, Jeff. Damn, yeah, man. no, Look at this dude. youngster wasn't even around. Were you around when AOL was around? Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, you were like born. Did when, you? Uh, he was probably born when the discs were being mailed to everybody, like in the in the free hours. Yeah, <laughs> seven hundred hours of free <laughs> internet yeah. streaming. I, by the end, it was just like ten thousand. It was like infinite. It was infinite. I was like, what are you guys even doing? Like, yeah. Speaking of AOL, that's that's an interesting thought. G, you remember like late nineties internet, AOL, GeoCities, Angel Fires, Ask Jeeves, Alta Vista, all the shit. That I think with NFTs and Web three. We're in 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 that phase, mm-hmm. like all these uh, all these prominent platforms and pr- the fact that we've been using MetaMask and we're still using MetaMask mm-hmm. and it's still the most prominent and most used wallet is insane to me. The yeah. UI UX is fucking horrific, <laughs> right? It is the least friendly <laughs> yeah. user experience possible, and it's so. What I'm saying is like we're we're in that phase, man. Yeah. Like OpenSea, MetaMask, blah blah blah, like all the shit that we use. There's a good chance that e- even like Board Ape, even like the Decentraland and Sandbox and, and the metaverses that we're using right now, it's a good chance that these are all angel fires. Mm-hmm. It's a it's an obvious glimpse into the future, but I don't know that even the MySpace has arrived. Yeah, Definitely not the Facebook, Instagrams, YouTubes of, of this world, you know? Like, yeah. But in 10 years, we'll see this play out and like there's going to be world-changing, multi-trillion dollar market cap companies that are native to the space that that may have not even been invented yet. Yeah, that's why like my theory like on, on Yuga Labs is that uh, it just because just because they're the first ones to do it in that fashion that way and grow so big so fast i feel like they're kind of like the ones that are going to be the guinea pigs for yeah. a lot of the the failures and somebody else is going to come and learn from them and just do it you know 100 times better and they that's my theory i mean it's perfectly possible that yeah, AOL because of because of that yeah. because of AOL like all these things and- and how important was AOL though? Because it, it oh, showed it was, a glimpse dude. into what was possible. Yeah, and yeah. and, and it was my all, introduction. Yeah, to it was incredible, yeah. right? And but with Board Ape, like my thing is, um, other other side, it's got to be dope. Like yeah. it's got to be. Well, fucking I feel like they have good. to do everything perfect, which is not fair for them. It's, it's not fair, and it's so so difficult when your brand is predicated on coolness. It is difficult, man. Like, cause brands come and go. What what? Ten years ago, what were some cool? Or fifteen years ago, brands that existed. MySpace. Sean John. You oh, know, Sean like John. Google. Yeah. Like, it's just when your brand is predicated on, on being cool, it is so, so. And like, that's what Board Ape 
has going for them right now. They're mm-hmm. just like cool. They're the trend. They're the culture. Um, can they keep that up? Sure. They're incredibly talented. They have a very large war chest of billions and billions of dollars and yeah. all this shit. But like, it's it's going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, it's going to be. It's definitely going to be. Uh, you know, something that they if they have to play, almost they have to do every play perfect. Yeah. All the way through. Um, and at the end of that hype cycle, you've got to have a product. Mm-hmm. And so obviously they 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 were like shit. They signed a movie deal with Coinbase, but that IP is not strong. There's no characters or stories there. Yeah, it's not going to work. What is going to work, or what could work, is the game. And so that's why they chose like gaming, like metaverse gaming yeah, I as see, like that I final see gaming. product. And and that I really think could work. Yeah, merch is is too difficult because when you're predicated on coolness, um, IP is not going to work because they just don't have any stories or characters. But gaming, yeah, that they could. Like with, everything. And let me ask a question. I, don't, I mean, I'm not too educated on like the characters behind Board Ape. Is the, is there a specific character like the, the way you have Eli Trust? Is there mm-hmm. is there like a main ape? Or? There, there's not. And let me give clarity to my my previous him. When I say IP is not going to work, I mean the, the IP will not be able to translate to to, to story. TV and, and film. Oh yeah. The IP will definitely work for merch, mm-hmm. posters, collect you know physical collectible shit like that. But um yeah i i just think this coinbase movie deal that they signed is going to be a massive flop uh one thing i want to ask you is there's an upcoming nft nyc event happening all this going to be all about nfts in new york city for three days and you are doing something special you guys are doing something what are you guys doing there so i think the actual convention so it's called nft nyc there's a convention i believe it's in times square there's like thousands of speakers and activations and whatever and companies and brands converging um, but the cool thing is like every Web3 project, every brand and company trying to enter the space, there's going to be so much shit going on from lunches to parties to dinners to breakfast to speech, whatever. But we're doing something cool that Wednesday, the 22nd, we're throwing the Welcome to a Luna party. June 22nd. June 22nd, Wednesday from 6 to 10 p.m. It's called Welcome to a Luna. It's going to be in Somewhere Nowhere, uh, NYC. The highest rooftop Highest rooftop bar, venue, whatever in, in the city. Incredible nice. sweeping views of... A Luna. a Luna City. Not yeah. New York. It's not New York anymore. Um, <laughs> and we'll, throw, and we'll throw the wallpaper you guys built uh, over this, what you're saying, so they can imagine how it's going to look. Yeah, it's, it's just going to be awesome. We have full creative control. We're incorporating so much of our lore and our story and our, and our culture in, in, into, the, uh, into the event. It's going to be access pass holders only. But mm-hmm. even then, I, I'm, I'm a little worried that the, the demand is going to far outweigh the supply. It's only going to be, I think, I think the capacity is 400. If we want to give everybody a plus one, it, it comes, you know, it's really only about 200 spots, and I do think there'll be more than 200 access pass holders. So uh, we'll, we'll see how we manage it. That'll all come out in in, uh, in the next weeks. Today is um, May 15th. Not sure when this episode will come out, but just for for context, um, it's gonna be dope, bro. That's so dope, so exciting. Man. So dope. So and then exciting. you guys have you guys a, are gonna be there. Oh yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna be there. Pull up. Yeah, we're actually uh, <laughs> taking the whole film crew there with us. So yeah. we'll, have, go, we'll have extra Maybe. extra hands that we roll and can have a drink this time. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. You gotta we'll take some time goes. off the camera, bro. Yeah. Just enjoy. Last time he was last at the Suki party, he was you know focused on filming, yeah. and I was like, dude, we gotta bring the whole crew that way you can yeah. chill a little bit once Mo- in a while. Morphotones will probably perform, which is. A band within the MV3 universe. Band with Trust the MV3 issues universe. out now. It's the chart topping single of 2081. Hey, uh, go check that out on YouTube right now on the Metaverse YouTube. It's called Trust Issues by Morphotones. It's badass. Man. Badass. It's song, yeah. Um, also, leading up to after uh, the 22nd, you have a, an event on the 23rd. What's that? More than likely, that one hasn't been finalized. We're in okay, discussion okay, with okay. After Party. That is that is public at After Party on socials. They're they're. Um, they're doing some interesting things in Web3 and uh, um, token-gated Coachella. Think about it that way. And they're also mm. doing like ticket uh, or token-gated uh, ticketing platforms. And um, they, you know, it's, it's just going to be exciting. We're thinking about hosting it at Marquee. Mm-hmm. Um, we have some contracts on the table, but we're just, you know, there, there's some things that we got to discuss in terms of like creative control and price and all that shit. But like Thursday night, more than likely, we'll also have an event. Nice. Um, and again, um, exclusive to holders. So again, so, utility, man. Yeah, right. Utility. This is what we talk about. Access. Access. Right? So, so you gotta have an MV3 access pass and you can buy yeah. one off OpenSea right now if you're buy not part of the OpenSea, yeah. yeah, if you're not part of the actual uh, community where you're uh, you've been granted access to mint, yep. you can buy one off the floor price. Floor is uh, about one right now, which is about two thousand uh, dollars USD. Um, we're in a bear market, miss of a bear, but our floor is holding strong. I think that's a testament to our to the strength of our community and, and mm-hmm. the love shown by them. Um, not financial advice, of course, but bro, we we Come intend yeah. over the next ten years to bring 
considerably more than two thousand dollars worth of value uh to to these tokens not financial advice yeah not financial advice but you know yeah <laughs> not financial advice but yeah, yeah we're, we're very very confident this man the conviction that we have in ourselves this community this product this story yeah and is this high yeah and just uh real quick at the eluna city party which is on the 22nd it's open bar right like it, open bar if you're a holder if you're a holder well, if you're a holder you gotta be able to get an open bar free to drink anything you want eluna the, themed beverages yeah. do you yeah. recommend like a specific uh dress style or just dress cool man just you know just cool. <laughs> dress to impress i guess i don't know dress yeah. however you want there will be cameras just, rolling just so you know it'll be cameras rolling that's Ro another thing i guess i guess we got to get people to sign a waiver like hey you might be on you might be in the, in the yeah room. no rolling's but, um, gonna be rolling yeah rolling's <laughs> gonna, gonna be rolling, rolling. <laughs> and free food Oh, oh, Wizacos. 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 Wiz yeah. is a beloved, beloved character in the MV3 storyline, and uh, he loves tacos. Okay. There yeah. might be even some MV3 characters rolling around. You never know. Man. I think I want to dress up like one of the characters, man. I'm down to do it. You and Jesse, I think Jamie is dressing up as Cosima. Who you want to be, Mr. Trust? Mr. Trust. Benicio Del. Benicio Del. There is a, a character you, you showed us yesterday. I don't think it's been revealed yet. The guy with tat the tattoos. Yeah. Kind of looks like Jeff. <laughs> Yo, you could be him. That's yeah. Josiah. Yeah. He's in the Morphotones. Yeah. He'll be yeah. performing. You want? I guess you'd be performing then if you're going to Nilly Vanilli style. Let's lip sync. It's going to be a great event, man. I cannot wait. In LA, yeah. um, you know, we had a um, sort of the spur of the moment event. It was an open bar uh, in a bar in Silver Lake. And it was just like, yo, we're all here in LA. A bunch of people in our community live here. Let's just like quickly put an open bar together. 130 people showed up. Oh, wow. Um, and the love, it was just awesome getting oh, yeah, to meet we everybody, there. man. <laughs> yeah, we were there. Yeah. <laughs> Like we're like, wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm providing context. I'm not yeah, telling you. I'm we'll telling put, the it, dude, that was, it was jam packed, man. It was but like, how cool is it to get to meet Web3 people and like in real life? I don't even know their, their real name still. I'm like, LA Chica, what up? Yeah. Or, 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 you know, whatever. What up, Pandulce? Yeah. I don't know Pandulce's real name, but I know his Web3 name and I, and I, and I love the Where's kid. Pandulce from? Um, man, good question. He looks Dominican. Dominican, but I don't know. right? Uh, yeah, he I looks don't know. Dominican, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, it, now that you mentioned that, that's a good segue into this idea of like, there's a lot of characters, a lot of people in the community right now, as founders as well, that are undocks. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows who their true identity is. And um, that's one of the most interesting things for me as a storyteller. Like when I come into the space, there's this, there's even, even from the inception of like blockchain, Satoshi Nakamoto undoxed, you know, the, fo the founding figure of, everything that was that's been created since then was a person that was undocks we don't know who he is we'll probably never find out the true identity of uh satoshi maybe i will i don't know but um hal finney hal finney that's your that's your, that's your i think he's satoshi yeah, for sure. satoshi okay um but it can't be verified officially no no yeah, it's my yeah. guess. one man's guess my, yeah my i opinion. actually for a, for a long time i thought it was half any but then there's other uh, well i don't want to get into that right. but <laughs> that's another that's another <laughs> podcast but um this uh there's a lot of founders that are undocks that are now slowly wanting to become doxed which is revealing who they really are because it, it provides a lot of like uh i guess confidence or to the the holders, entity holders from the community, it brings it brings transparency to who they really are, and it shows what their true intentions and what what they're trying to do. And uh, you were part of the few projects that are fully doxed, yeah. um, and to to a certain extent, because the I mean I've known you from the past, you know, known you for six about six years now, but um, a lot of people still don't know really who you really are. Like yeah. they just they right, just know right, Roberto, right. and. Uh, and the little azuki pfp azuki which PFP. is now an mb3 pfp that's yeah. my forever pfp mb3 yeah and um so me and roland uh we were, were walking down the street one day in la after shooting with you at the suki party we shot you know we uh we had all these conversations with different founders from the web3 space different people in the web3 space all these like you said all these usernames and we were like, so I was trying to explain to Roland what docs means and undocs. He was trying to, he yeah, was trying to get I, that concept. I asked, I was like, dude, what is, I, I see people saying the word docs, undocs. What does that mean? Yeah. yeah. So while we we're having this uh, walk the, down LA uh, Hollywood Boulevard, uh, middle of two in the morning <laughs> after we had been shooting all day, I was like, it dawned on me. It was like, oh man, this is, this is, this is the stories we got to tell. Like the stories of one, uh, of the actual founders, but actually 
providing the platform for founders to dox themselves in in a you know in a, in a, in a good way like where it's where we can really see who they truly are like you invited us into your house you know we've been uh, pretty much you've been uh, completely transparent with your workflow how you're communicating with your team uh even we even know carly now and and tio and um you know even when we went to the mv3 house in in uh with jay Mays and, and tori in la like you guys were just open about it like there was nobody hiding like oh mr so secretive over there like doing scammy stuff in the background like that. it was it was all open and i think uh you know those are the for me like that's one of the most uh I guess interesting things uh, in the space, and um, anyways, gets me to our announcement today. Ooh. Yeah, because Ew. we haven't announced it. Boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. And um, <laughs> so we came up with this concept of doxed, this show idea, and you were the first person we called. I was like, bro, I gotta tell you about this. <laughs> um, and this is about a month ago. Wow. And you were like, Jeff, let's do it. I like, saw it instantly, man. Yeah. I, the vision clicked instantly. Yeah. yeah. And um, you believed in the idea. And since then, we've been working on this on this first season of Docs. Um, we got an episode one announced or come in? Or yeah. So we on? have an episode <laughs> one fully shot. Uh, still not fully edited, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's getting there, getting really close. Mm -hmm. And it's looking incredible yeah yeah you saw yeah. it you, you, saw did you see something you Holy saw something shit. you saw a teaser you saw only the teaser <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> netflix here we come yeah, yeah. 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 i say we build our own netflix right, man yeah. docs.tv dxxd.tv yeah it's public now yeah. okay <laughs> so, okay announce it announce it so uh yeah guys so our announcement is that we are coming up with uh, a new show it's coming out pretty pretty soon by, by the time you're watching this it might I, might be like a week away before the first episode drops you're gonna put the logo right here yeah, we might put a teaser yeah. at the end of this, of this, Metaverse of this video. Metaverse presents Doxed yeah. with Digital Jeff yeah. and Roland. Yeah, yeah he brought his yeah. on, on the building. Man, no, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he's still the student. Yeah. Right? He's still the student uh, yeah. and that's yeah. still the mentor. Yeah. I well, it. and it's, it's mostly <laughs> like, yeah, you get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Doxed with Digital Jeff, that's the official title. It's, it's actually Doxed, but like this first season is with Digital Jeff. I'm the yeah. one come into people's territory they're inviting me over the first the first episode same thing I spent four days with them with the whole crew it's gonna be a fucking and, great episode uh, man those yeah. guys are builders yeah and they i saw how they're building pretty impressed did we announce uh, our name not yet right we, have we haven't announced officially the name but they actually put it out so it's safe to we can say it on our if they say it on their platform we got so we have rights to say it on our platform yeah so episode one is going to be with meta relics Ooh. jeff co and mark brazil what you think rolling like overall like what what is a uh, something something's brewing we got something brewing they yeah. got something brewing yeah can't wait to share don't want to say too much they're accomplished man mm -hmm. jeff is a highly accomplished highly sought after and i might even use the word famous mm -hmm. artist yeah you know He's one of Instagram's culture. kind of finest, man. He's he's a leader of culture. He's a he's a communicator, an evangelist of culture through his art. And Mark is a is an operator. They've already built companies. They built iconic. Mm -hmm. They've they had they've um, they sold Gary, art. Gary V and and uh, Scooter Braun have led investments into their company, and they're and they're now more than likely attached into this. I mean, like very very. I'm bullish on those guys, man. They're they're just builders. They're passionate. Mm -hmm. They're dedicated. What do you yeah. think? No, and, and this is, for, I think, for the first time you get to really see a side of Jeff Cole. And on this episode specifically, you'll, you'll see the side of Jeff Cole that people probably don't know about him. Um, you, you think you guys got him to open up a little bit? Oh, oh definitely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 yeah, he opened up. Damn. And he even said it like, I've, he said it himself, like, I've never actually really opened up this much before. Wow. Yeah. But he's like, it's good for me to start doing this now. Like, see, because there's a bit of, he's shrouded in mystique. Mm -hmm. Jeff Cole. Jeff Cole, yeah. You know, who is this guy? For a long time, I didn't even know how he looked. Who's the man behind the art? Mm -hmm. Damn. So yeah. we get to we get a glimpse of it on Docs. Yep. Episode oh, yeah. one. We go deep. Yeah. We go deep in. Yeah, it was it was awesome so, just yeah. being in the space because we had known about Iconic, obviously, yeah. for years. Um, and I believe last year we just had the conversation about who are these guys, you know, just looking up to the brand because mm -hmm. we do branding and, and we're in that world. And it was amazing just getting in there and seeing it from a different perspective and seeing how they built something over time is it was awesome oh, i can't wait man. yeah, that, that's yeah. Gonna, I, I really believe so highly in this miniseries like your guys create a vision mm -hmm. 
is unbelievable. Thank you. I thank can't you. wait for the world of, of Web no three pressure. to see it. No and I and I truly believe like this is going to be sort of the flagship miniseries of of Web three. Oh yeah. I, I bet you every network is trying to capitalize on on the tidal wave that we talked about it earlier, but they're mm -hmm. not going to do it like this. Yeah. Like this is this is raw. This is behind the scenes of of the next generation of brands and IP and yeah. and, and platforms and protocols that are being built. And why don't we do a little? Who who are we going to manifest? Like who who would be your grail sort of you know guests or what would you call it i guess like i would love to like because there's this uh, so so let me before i answer that question yeah. let me say something so there's this version of people that are doxxed where they show they show you who they are in their own way like if you go to my instagram page it's a highlight reel of things that i'm doing yeah all right but nobody's ever come into my house and like seen the way i really operate right so for me like there's two definitions for docs one is you know revealing your identity but then the second one is revealing your true identity, like who your true soul is right. and your intentions and how you, how you operate, wow. how, you, how you actually work. Because a lot of people will, you know, will show you what, like in the PR way, like mm -hmm. the traditional PR way, they'll show you exactly what you need to watch in order for you to believe their narrative. And it's, it's natural. Like even, I think even I do it. Uh, Showmanship so, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, when you come and see how people operate and you really get to have these conversations with them about not just not just not just about their project like not only about web3 but really about them um i think there's something uh beautiful about that and i, I think that. when i think about like you said the holy grail like dude i would love to uh fully dox mark zuckerberg you know we can like invite us over to his house for a few days like really show how he operates and see behind the look behind the curtain i think that'd be that'd freaking be fascinating. fascinating nobody fascinating. nobody knows anything about his personal life besides what you know he's publicly shared you know him on the, very on the surfboard no, or, yeah i've looked yeah <laughs> and it's the, all very very carefully manicured exactly it's like i am an everyday person here's me in my modest size garage yeah. on my grill yeah it's exactly like, is that you though yeah we don't know we, we don't, don't know could we find out yeah so that would be if you ask me the holy grail i think that would be holy grail even i even thought about like because i feel even elon like I would love, to, uh, Elon would be amazing too. But I feel like Elon's more transparent, at least to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And Mark's more like, "This is my identity." I love. Uh, it. I, it's I, very I agree protected. With that. I'm co-signed on that, man. Because yeah. Zuckerberg is is such a fascinating figure. Because I love Mark, bro. People love yeah. to to hate on Mark um, Zuckerberg, but he had a he had a podcast with um, um what's the guy's name? Well, he had one with uh, Tom Billio. Oh no, not uh, Billy. The one before that, uh, Saradici. Yeah, one. Uh, he, he it, it was a I forget the guy he's a great podcaster oh he's like very direct and he asks questions that nobody else asks yeah. you know like very I can't believe I blanked out deep introspective one. questions he asked Zuckerberg on you know the meaning of life is he afraid to die like things like this and that wow. was the first time I ever saw him but uh, but on that on that podcast I realized the magnitude of difficulty that Mark Zuckerberg's job is right like let's just call it a job like yeah i don't think anybody in the world could have executed with facebook the way he executed yeah and like the amount of pressure and trying to placate and please all parties of every religious and political spectrum it's like mm -hmm. it's it's almost an impossible job so of course there's going to be a lot of hate um yeah. you know so that anyways long story short zuckerberg i agree man yeah i think that he would be like the the crown jewel of, of the docs miniseries it would be yeah. fascinating to get a behind the scenes glimpse of him so mark if you're listening send us an invite and another one that i'd love to see and and, and just public invite like if zagamon ever wanted a oh, platform dude, yeah. to dox himself and control like sort of the narrative and really share who he is and what he's about man yeah i would love to i would love to dox uh Zagabon. Yeah. i think it'll give him an opportunity to really like you know showcases it's like the human side of who he yeah. is and um but you know that's actually that's actually like trending right now it's crazy like yeah, it's, it's what a story man what a story but mm -hmm. you know he's uh and and not to be controversial because i know there's a lot of people angry with him but he is brilliant yeah you know in my conversations with him he's very thoughtful very strategic um so it'd be it'd be interesting to get you know sort of a glimpse into his mind mm -hmm. i don't yeah. know just putting it out there zuckerberg <laughs> Zaga, Elon. Uh, yeah. Kanye, what about you, Roland? Where you at? No, yeah. yeah, Roland. Who, 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 who mm. would you love to, you know, get a get a deeper glimpse at? I think it'd be cool to um, dox like fully the guys from like Cyberpunks and and Board Apes just because they're so big on the space mm -hmm. and I think yeah. it'll, it'll give people like um, 
I guess more trust in the space because they kind of see where these yeah. ideas come from. I think, although it's very, it's a very big name and everybody knows who they are. I think it's important to yeah. also like get a, an inside scoop of who really created. I actually don't even know exactly it. who they are. Like I know yeah. the names. I know but their names and their pictures, it. but you're right. What uh, yeah. we, don't, we need to go deeper. Yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. they really the? Maybe they showed out other names. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I, I think that'll be interesting. Although yeah. you know, it's a, it's a big name. Everybody knows yeah. the, the project, but who yeah. really created it? Why did they create It'd it? Also, just be interesting to hear the you know, their take on the last year. That, that was one of the, the fastest growing brands of all time. Mm -hmm. What was going on behind the scenes? You know, how's their, their mental and physical health? Like, yeah. what kind of opportunities did it create? What toll did it take on them? Like, man, just going deep in with, with, uh, with that team would be fascinating. Yeah, like, what yeah. are they really doing today at, for the project, you know? Like, I wonder if they have any footage also from what they were building in the right. very beginning. That would be man, I'm, I'm to uh, see. I'm so bullish on this mini series. Um, so it's all interesting how it's gonna it's gonna work out. But important to to me, and I know important to you guys is is for you guys to have ownership. Ownership, in it as well. yeah. That's the ethos of yep. Web three, and mm -hmm. uh, and this this really could be, you know, in the in the future, like this this grand brand. I yeah, think it's, I, think I it's see it kind of like very similar to what Vice built at Web exactly. two, like we're exactly. the Web three version of Vice. Nice. And we built this, uh, you know platform where it's not only us creating stories but like many other filmmakers creating entertainment for uh for token holders specific collections i love that yeah i so, think that's such a strong vision so yeah man i, I think like we gave a little bit too much alpha but yeah i was you know, gonna say i don't know what we want to yeah we gotta run all right, all right and that's it for today guys awesome. thank you so much for tuning in this is uh, amazing thank you guys so yeah, much for having me on the house of clay yeah officially on the house of clay man it was a it was a pleasure man thank you so much